let me show you what I mean about preaching the gospel to ourselves. Uh, look at the rest of the passage, starting in verse 25. In the same manner he took the cup, he said, this cup is a new covenant. In my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The first element that we see in verse 25 is, and, and I call this that at communion you should pause to look in three directions. You remember your mom taught you when you were little that, that when you're crossing the road, you, you step out and you look, and you look in two directions. Did you know communion, you look in three. And every communion we're supposed to do this. The first one is we look back at the cross. And, and the, the idea is we're supposed to remember the cross and that our sins are gone. So the first, the first vantage point of communion is looking back. And, and we look back, not, we don't look back at all of our sins. We don't look back at all of our failures. The, the purpose of the cross, by the way, is that as far as sins go, you don't look back. But we are supposed to look back at where the sins were taken care of, and it's on the cross. We look back at the cross of Jesus Christ, and we see at the cross, my sins are gone. And that's why every time there's a celebration of communion, there is such a flood of joy that comes. Why? Because the Bible says, to whom much is what? Forgiven. The same what? Loves much. The more we're aware as we remember him and look back at the cross, the more we're aware that our sins are gone, the more we love him. So the first vantage point, the first, the, the first thing that we do at communion is we remember him, we look back. Secondly, look at verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Here's a second admonition from the Lord. We're supposed to look up at Christ, our Savior's coming. We're supposed to not just look back at the cross, we're supposed to look up. And, and John put it this way, he said, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus, let me not be ashamed before you at your coming. That's what John the Apostle wrote, the one that wrote the, the, the most incredibly magnificent gospel, the one that wrote the, those incredible epistles on assurance and on, on how to know that, that your sins are forgiven and the one that wrote the Revelation. Do you know what he said? The one that Jesus loved? The one that was closest to earth, Christ on earth? The, the apostle that Jesus was allowing to get very close to him, do you know what he said? I know you're coming. I'm going to look up at you. I know you're coming, and I don't want to be ashamed at your coming. And so we look back at the cross where our sins are gone. We look up at Christ, our Savior's coming. Now, now look this, this is one of the more important admonitions in the whole communion service. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Kind of sounds like Hebrews, doesn't it? That we're not supposed to sin willfully after we receive a knowledge of the truth. And that was written to Jews that were fence-sitters that were were coming to Christ and then going back to Judaism. It was kind of like, you know, they would sin and they'd, they'd run to confessions and then they'd sin and they'd run back to confessions. And, and it's almost like they were abusing the, the free offer of forgiveness. Well, Paul says, if, if you and I, tonight, when that tray comes around, if we grab a piece of bread and act like everything is great, and, and we're just smiling and, and taking part. And if we do that, look what he says. If you drink this, or if you eat this bread and drink this in an unworthy manner, unworthy manner, we become guilty before the Lord. And so how do we keep out of that? Well, verse 28, but let a man examine himself. See, this is the, the third direction we have to look. Examining ourself is looking in my heart. I look back, I look up, and I look within. What am I looking for? I'm looking to see, am I entertaining sin? Am I allowing sin to be a guest in my life? I'm, I'm allowing sin to be a guest in my life. I'm nurturing sin, protecting, hiding, sheltering, allowing to live with me. Paul says, examine yourself. 
before you come to communion and make sure as you examine yourself, look in your heart. Are you secretly cherishing, nourishing, sheltering any sin? You know, we talk about people nurturing a grudge, that they, they keep it. Did you know what the Bible calls it? It calls it bitterness. And it says, let all anger and wrath and malice and evil speaking and all bitterness be put away. When, when do you put it away? That's why the early church celebrated communion, I believe, so often. I think that's why they were so powerful. The early church had very short accounts with the Lord. Did you know some people don't, don't keep short accounts with the Lord? There is so much unconfessed, unforsaken, undealt with parts of their life that they, some people even skip communion because they know this is part of it. That's why any time there's a celebration of communion, it should be like a magnet drawing us if we love the Lord. And we ought to avoid it like the plague if we don't. Because this is the only service that you notice that, that it talks about. It, it, the Lord, remember this morning in Romans, or I mean in uh, Revelation 2, I said the Lord comes and inspects and walks around. He really comes to this service. This is a service in honor of Christ, in honor of his death, a time when we look back at the cross that our sins are gone, but he is looking into our hearts and saying, I forgave you of all your sins, but you're right now nurturing, harboring, sheltering sin, whether it be jealousy or anger or fear or lust, whether it be an unforgiving spirit that leads to infection that, that defiles us called bitterness. Communion is when we look within. It starts by looking back because that floods our soul with joy because we know he died in our place. Then we look up and that kind of prepares us for that last part because we say, Lord Jesus, I know you're coming. And like John added, I don't want to be ashamed before you. Why would I be ashamed if I'm entertaining sin as a guest in my life? So three directions we need to look tonight. Look back. And, and look back until your heart, if you're born again, if you look back at the cross, it doesn't take long before that flood of joy. You know the old song, floods of joy, o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy come. Not happiness. Happiness is based on circumstances. Joy that I'm forgiven. Then I look up and I reorient because I, I, I know you're coming and I want to be the servant that's found doing what you left me to do. And after that wonderful two-part preparation, I pause and look within. And I honestly ask myself, is there any sin that I have entertained that's starting to have dominion over me? How do you know? Because the Christian life, there should be an increasing frequency in our life of response to Christ and a decreasing number of times we respond to sin. This is everyday life. And what we should have is we should notice in our life there's more and more and more response to obedience and less and less response to the lust of the flesh. That there's less and less of me that's not under his control. Remember, anything that's not under Christ's control, that's out of control in my life, isn't under his control. If anything's out of control, my appetites, my fears, my anxieties, my, my you know, anything, words, schedule, anything that's out of control, it's an immediate reminder to us it's not under Christ's control. And communion is where we examine ourselves.